Hi guys, this is Mike from The Last Corvette, and today is going to be a update video. So we're going to start with uh, what I've accomplished so far um, on this Corvette. Uh, over when almost end of February, so uh, there's a really good um, log of all the videos that I uh, put out on YouTube, and uh, we got our Pioneer head unit right there. We um, also have a complete LED conversion um, that actually was done last year. Uh, we have a backup camera here. And all that's been um, videotaped and, and, and recorded as far as how I did it and what I did. Um, obviously the taillights, I'm not going to uh, change out. I just don't like any of the LED look uh, taillights. I think they just, I don't know, I, I don't think they belong on a Corvette. Uh, everybody has their uh, views and, and it's fine. So if you like them, you like them. I, I'm not, I'm going to keep these stock ones. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, once again, what's done to this Corvette, you got a coarse axle back exhaust on it. Um, and when I took everything apart, I had the, the rear bumper cover repainted, the driver's side quarter, pal, uh, quarter panel repainted. And its main reason was there was a small imperfection from somebody's uh, uh, detail job from who God knows when. Um, and uh, the bumper had a little ding on it. So I just took it to a Maddox Chevrolet. Big shout out to them. Uh, the color matched it perfect. Um, the good thing about this Corvette is once it gets buffed out and wheeled out and paint corrected it's going to look brand new so uh, that's that's a plus <laughs> so moving on i mean everything in the trunk is complete that's my uh, car cover that i bought which i will use once i wash and clean everything out because right now this thing is just filthy and uh the bag of all the hardware to put the inner wheel liners back on and we'll get to that in a second close this puppy here so, I think in my previous video, I uh, did mention that I'm not going to paint the calipers just yet. I did clean them. Um, Scotch Bright wire brush, some brake clean. I'm going to clean them again. Um, and uh, just, just because it's too cold. I, I don't want to waste my time. Like I said, waste the product. Uh, but uh, long story short, this is going to be red. And then the raised lettering is going to be um, uh, as is, so like a high polish. This wheel, I already got it ordered, so I was going back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what I'm going to do uh, with, with these wheels. Am I going to powder coat them? Am I going to buy new wheels? Am I going to sell these? Am I going to keep them? So I am going to keep them, but it is cheaper for me. You can see this rash here. It is cheaper for me to uh, buy a new wheel. Uh, than to get this one refurbished. Obviously, the wheel I'm going to buy is going to be aftermarket wheel, uh, but uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be a perfect match. I'm also going to replace all four center caps because they're kind of weathered. Um, it, it's just cheaper. I mean, uh, one place that I do trust around this area, they said it will be about three hundred and eighty dollars for me to refinish this wheel. Well, I can buy OEM one for same price so i'm either gonna you know buy that or buy aftermarket but it's all gonna match i'm gonna leave and go with chrome so as you can see my front tires are in very good condition i mean basically brand new and i do have the b of goodrich g-force sport competition two tires in the rear um i believe this person the last owner i'm not sure about about this thing from the auction but the original owner um I want to say he had two sets of uh, uh, wheels for this, uh, this Corvette. So, going back here, actually we're going to go on the other side so you guys can see it better. But these are, and I looked them up, and uh, I think that you have to be uh, either a dealer or something like that. But these are, God, first of all, there's dry rot right there. Okay, so I knew about this. I didn't really drive it much last year anyway, especially not on highways. Uh, but they're, uh, 
they were burnout uh, <laughs> tires. Um, uh, they got some wear on them. But obviously, uh, they are at, at fronts and rears there, the matching the correct proper size. So that's not the problem, but the dry rod. If, if these weren't dry rotted, I would probably leave them on for one more season and swap them out. But I am going to replace them with the same style B of Goodrich uh, Force Competition 2. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, good tire, uh, kind of, you know, middle of the pack, really. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. But these, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, these tires are www.eptires.com, spelled with a Y. And there is a website, there's a company, but uh, I think, you know, it's one of those like, I want to see knockoff maybe tires that are just cheap, like throwaway, you know, just, you know, you race once or you do a burnout in them or whatever. Um, but I know these wheels, all other wheels, except the one that has a little bit of tiny of rash. And that rash, I guarantee you, came from a, uh, a tire machine, not a curb. It would have been much worse. But the rest of these wheels are in perfect shape. So that tells me that these wheels over the years were stashed away. And maybe these tires were just put on as a just to get it to the auction when this vehicle was getting repoed. So that's that. Anyway, so the, the vehicle is going to have matching be of good rich in the back. So before I um, take this thing to the dealer uh, for a wheel alignment, uh, um, tire balance, uh, I'm going to put two, two tires in the trunk, a wheel, and then we're going to swap it out. And I'm probably going to end up selling that, uh, that front wheel. So if anybody's interested, hey, um, we can definitely get something done. Um, in this area, um, wheel liner is going to stay out. So I'm going to... The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these calipers to replace the the links uh, on the rear, both of them. And then from there, it's, it's, it's ready. It's going to be ready to go to the dealer, uh, get the fuel pump replaced, um, and uh, transmission service. And then from there, uh, she's off to Dino Tune when it warms up. Dino Tune and, um, and uh, wheel and wax and paint correction, and we'll just kind of you know, go from there. All right, so enough of that. So one trend that I try to stick to, if I do modify vehicles, I try to, uh, you know, keep them nice and clean or OEM as possible. One of the things that I did replace is uh, my A-pillar covers. They're trims. Um, they're very uh, known to crack split right here. I, I did make a video, I believe, on it. So these are replaced on both sides. They were faded and they were cracked. So I replaced them. It's, it's, a, it's a process, but if anybody's interested, you can uh, reach out to me on Instagram at Last Corvette, or you can um, you know leave a, leave a comment below and uh, I'll tell you guys exactly where to get them, how to get them, how to install them, how to uninstall the original ones. <laughs> So, uh, as far as the front, end, the front end goes, everything is, all the screws are back in. The wheel liners are back in on both sides. Um, I did check the gaps today. And, ta-da! Both headlights are finally in, bolted in place. The front um, lip is bolted in place, snapped in. Uh, and uh, the gaps look pretty good, pretty even. So, uh, Driver's side fog light is replaced. I am gonna uh, wet sand the, the passenger side really quick. Uh, well, when it gets warm and, and polish it out so it, so it matches, but at least it doesn't have the, the water intrusion like the, the, the other one had. But the main thing is the headlight lenses came out great. Like I said, I'm gonna keep an eye out on a uh, used and abused passenger side headlight in black. I just need the inner trim uh, and I'll have to pop this headlight out again and redo it but not a big deal uh really overall um it's all doable so yeah this definitely looks good um so yeah all the all the wiring is done for the front camera the cameras everything works and uh we're really starting to get there um you know as far as getting this corvette you know up to uh up to a level where it's going to be drivable and it's going to be reliable. Um, E85 um, conversion is also to follow. I'm going to do that before, obviously, the dyno. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, um, 
Um, talked to, um, I actually contacted Texas Speed. I talked to the guys there, and they said that uh, with my plans of uh, going ethanol, going uh, original, well, original plan is to go NA, naturally aspirated with heads, cam from Texas Speed and a 102 fast intake, they said I might as well just get, you know, 90 pound or 100 pound injectors, um, once, especially once I um, upgrade to a supercharger. So I'm going to do that anyway, because if you do um, E85 conversion on a stock, well, this this is actually not stock. So I'm probably, at, if I leave my 35, these are 35 pound injectors. If I leave my stock injectors in, I'm going to be maxed out with the 30% more fuel that you got to spray with ethanol. So um, I'm probably going to be able to pass the dyno and gain a few horsepower, but moving forward, I'm going to have to replace the injectors anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the E or the flex fuel kit in uh, and um, and then upgrade my eight injectors to a um, basically uh, like probably 110, 120 PSI or a, a, not sorry, PSI, but pounds. Um, and, um, you know, and just do that. And then, because it's going to get tuned anyway, so it's going to get tuned in, but I'm going to have all that, that, that room and that window to grow. Uh, so I don't have to keep doing it over and over again. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. Uh, you know, um, Texas Speed is definitely going to be my, uh, my source for parts. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's plenty of other uh, places out there, but, uh, Texas Speed has definitely, uh, got the, got their stuff together. So it's, it's going to be, uh, head cam, uh, headers, uh, car, uh, with cat deletes. So she's going to, she's going to, well, she's going to be a healthy one. And, um, then we kind of go from there. So I'm happy that, uh, the sun is out even, I think only for a few hours, <laughs> but, uh, the Corvette is finally starting to take shape. Uh, and, um, obviously the biggest hurdle is still going to be the fuel pump, which like I said before, I'm going to end up doing, uh, at a dealer. It's just, it's not worth, uh, me to, uh, you know, try to uh, do it on the garage floor here. There's just not enough room. It's dangerous. And, you know, more than likely being that it's original pump, um, it's going to be sticky and the crossover pipe is going to fall apart. So I'd rather have it, you know, happen on the hoist <laughs> or if he has to pull the, the rear uh, trans and diff out, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to do it on a hoist at a dealer versus uh, in my garage. Um, so that's about it, guys. Uh, quick little update. Um, and uh, you can definitely, definitely check out all the pictures, videos on either YouTube or um, my Instagram, which is uh, Last Corvette. Um, and I'll catch you guys later.